Hey guys, we're going to take a look at the new M12 3 8 inch crown staples. It shoots T50 staples uh, from lengths of 3 8 of an inch all the way to 9 16 of an inch in length. It's supposed to get 1500 shots per 1.5 amp hour battery. It is model number 2447-20. So Milwaukee sent this over for me to test. I've got a variety of materials right here, and we're going to see how it does on all of them. First, we're going to take a close-up look, then get into the action. So here's the stapler up close. It's got a lot of great features packed into a small form factor. Uh, you've got an all-metal magazine right here. You just squeeze this end uh, and slide it out. You load your staples directly into this chute. It even has a reminder, don't put them on top of here. You just close it back up. You can see how many staples you've got along this side right here. When you get down to about five staples, it'll lock you out and won't let you fire, so you'll have to load more in. This blade up front is how you do uh, bump fire, uh, and it's also a safety. So whenever you hold down the trigger and just push that against the surface, it'll fire staples, uh, and you just pick it up and fire another one, pick it up, fire another one, as long as you hold down that trigger. Or you can keep your hand off the trigger, push this down, and then fire one staple by squeezing the trigger. Uh, so there's no selector switch between uh, single fire and bump fire, um, but I kind of like that because it lets you switch back and forth between modes really easily. You've got your battery fuel gauge here. Uh, you just stick the battery in and pull the trigger, uh, and it'll tell you how much fuel you have left in your M12 batteries. You have a belt clip on this side, uh, and you can actually move it to the other side if you want. Um, this is actually a really good balance point. It's pretty sturdy, too. Uh, if you hook this on your belt or your jeans pocket, it'll hang the gun upside down, and it's really easy to swing it back up and get back into firing when you need it. It also has little rubber uh, stoppers right here that'll grip any surface you set it down on. Uh, so it's not going to slide away or mar up your work surface. On the back here is your depth selection switch. Uh, and the only real complaint I have about this is it's got too much resolution. So from max to min, there are 50 individual clicks. And you just kind of grab it and spin it. But it's not super easy to spin. Uh, and, it, and it takes forever if you're going from max to min. If you want to go from half inch staples down to quarter inch staples, you're going to have a lot of adjustment to do many, many clicks. The one other thing I was a little bit concerned about is this uh, safety blade uh, for the bump fire. I thought it might get caught on things, um, and I haven't had a huge issue with it so far, and I even kind of scraped it and banged it uh, against you know hard surfaces to try to see if I could mess it up. Uh, and so far, it looks like it's doing fine, um, but if it takes a lot of abuse. Um, that might be an early failure point, uh, but I really don't see any way around having a blade like this if you want bump fire. Uh, you've got to have something that's going to do a contact actuation. The weight of this stapler comes in at 3 pounds, 2 ounces, bare tool, and if you add a uh, compact form factor M12 battery, it's going to bump you up to 3 pounds, 9 ounces. So it's pretty lightweight. Uh, it's actually surprisingly heavy for its size, though. It's got a lot of uh, guts in here, pretty solid motor, I'm betting. Uh, and it actually, it doesn't have the big nitrogen or compressed gas cylinder that the other M18 nailers have. Uh, so there's a very minor delay whenever you go to fire it, um, from when you actually pull to the trigger to when it, it, when it actually actuates. Um, but it's not much of a slowdown at all. Alright, so I've got some uh, hardboard right here and some walnut. Uh, so I'm going to test the capability of this tacking hardboard to a hardwood. I use hardboard sometimes for backings on dressers I make because you're never going to see it when it's up against the wall. And then I like to staple it um, because you can pull the staples out a lot easier than brads. So these are half inch staples I'm putting in here. And you can see there's a little bit of deflection in the legs. Um, and I had these two right here that aren't flush. Um, or aren't up against the workpiece, I had the back end of this up off the table. Um, so that's why those didn't drive all the way in. But the rest of them, you can see there aren't really any gaps between the hardboard um, and the hardwood and the staple. That one's, you know, pretty much perfect drive. Um, so it's not getting any mangled staples like I've seen with other staple guns when I'm doing this application, uh, which is really awesome. You just have to have a solid surface to staple it against. Next, I've got some uh, hardwood quarter inch plywood um, into just regular pine. And once again, I'm using half inch staples. 
those are going in just about flush. Um, it's actually pretty much sinking them below the surface. Uh, there's a little bit of a raised up bit, but the actual you know top of the staple is actually partially in the wood. No misfires, uh, no mangled staples with this. Uh, it's setting them great. Next test for this I think might be a bit of a challenge. I've got some uh, metal corner bead, some half inch drywall, and then pine for you know your representative stud. And I've got 9 16 8 inch staples in here which should just barely get into that stud. Um, so we'll see if it can do it. Uh, I saw a couple people ask online if it could do uh, metal corner beads, so we're going to see if it works. Well, it, wow, it mangled, <laughs> mangled that staple. Uh, it got it through the corner bead, I'm kind of surprised by that, um, but you're not going to be able to mud over that very easily. Um, so let's try it a couple more times to see if it doesn't mangle them. That one, ah, oh, we got a staple jam. Okay, so uh, pull our battery out here. Oh, staple came out pretty easily, um, you can see it pretty much tied it in a bow. Uh, so this is probably going to be a no-go for metal corner bead. I am impressed it made one all the way through. Uh, the second one you can see the, the divots here, uh, but it's not definitely not going to be a reliable application for stapling metal corner bead on. Unfortunately, we have found the limitations of this staple gun. Just to make sure this thing doesn't have any issues performing with rapid fire stapling, it doesn't have any thermal lockouts or anything, I'm just going to do a ton of staples. I actually just did around 150 uh, in this other side of the board, so I'm going to do 75 to 150 more. Uh, I don't think I'm going to see any problems bump firing this as fast as I can. 9 16 inch staples on max. Whoops, staples fell over. There we go. All right, and we hit uh, the dry fire lockout again. So that was around 150 staples, just about as fast as I can go. I don't feel any warmth or anything on this. Uh, a couple times that it didn't fire when I pushed it down, I just hadn't pulled far enough back for this to reset the bump fire mode. Uh, and you can see I even got a couple of these staples on top of other staples and it looks like they just either cut them in half or I guess they folded them under. Um, but it's got the power to drive staples on top of staples uh, if you don't move it in time. Alright, and after driving 300 um, 9 16 inch staples. I've got three bars left on my battery, uh, so I should get another 900 out of that. So that's 1200 9 16 inch staples. So I can definitely see this getting, if you got it on a lower power setting, 1500 3 8 inch staples. As far as competition goes, uh, I'm aware of a few other cordless staplers out there on the market. Aero, who makes the uh, T50 staples, has one. Uh, it's a 3.6 volt integrated battery. Uh, you only get 500 shots out of it. I think it's got a limited uh, staple depth. I think it's only 3 eighths of an inch that it can shoot. Um, and then it takes four hours to recharge after 500 shots. So that's not really comparable to this stapler at all. Um, I know Makita's got one on the horizon, but once again, for, for the M12 system, or for their 12 volt system, I don't think it has the depth capability that this one does. Uh, so this one right now is really in a, in a class of its own as far as cordless staplers go. So you've seen it in action. Uh, I really, really like this stapler. Uh, it's got a great sustained rate of fire. Um, you saw I filled up both sides of this pretty much uh, with staples um, as fast as I could go. No issues with overheating at all. Um, it drove staples into pretty much everything. The only jam I really got uh, was firing into this drywall metal corner bead. Um, and that's the only application this really didn't work at that I tried it on. If you guys have a different application you want to see me test this out on or if you just want me to report back, uh, ask me in the comments if I have the material lying around, I'll give it a shot. 
All right, so price point. This thing comes in at $99 bare tool, or if you get the one battery kit, you get this bag, one 1.5 amp hour battery, and the M12 charger. I think that's a pretty decent deal. If you look at some of the, the other staplers out there, um, if you get you know some of the lightweight carbon fiber ones that will give you less fatigue holding it, uh, but you still have to actuate it with your hand so your wrist will get tired. Um, those ones range up to $40 for a really nice one. Uh, and then for hammer tackers, those can get up in the $40 range too. If you get a cheaper one, they get down around 20 to 25. But the uh, ease of use this thing has uh, for repeated uh, stapling, I think it's definitely worth $99 if you're just stapling, stapling, stapling. Uh, it's going to save you a lot of wrist pain, uh, a lot of fatigue. Uh, it's going to cut out of your workflow. So hopefully this review was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section below. And once again, don't forget to subscribe.